There's this famous thought experiment for projectile motion involving a hunter and a monkey. When a hunter sees a monkey hanging from a tree, he stops in front of the tree at a distance. Traditionally, we would say that this hunter wants to shoot it down with a bullet. But let's be more humane and say that he's using a tranquilizer bullet instead. The hunter knows that this monkey has super fast reflex. He knows that after he pulls the trigger, the monkey will immediately react by letting go of the branch that he was holding onto, so that it begins to free fall towards the ground. With that in mind, he has to decide whether he should a aim above the monkey, b aim directly at the monkey, or c aim below the monkey. Usually, this problem is taught and solved using arbitrary parameters, but I think it's more straightforward if we have some numbers to work with. So take a look at this example. The rifle that the hunter has shoots with a barrel velocity of 80 meters per second. The hunter is 10 meters away from the monkey that is hanging 3 meters above ground. Before we can take this any further, we have to work out the angle that this triangle makes. We can use trigonometry, 10 theta is equal to opposite of adjacent. So theta is 10 to the minus 1, brackets 3 over 10. So if I plug this into the calculator, that gives us an angle of 16.7 degrees. Let's look at the bullet's motion before we look at the monkeys, and then we'll compare the two afterwards. And remember, the convenience of projectile motion is that we can separate the horizontal components from the vertical components. Just look at the rifle now. Horizontally, we can resolve the initial velocity to 80 times cos 16.7, which comes to 76.6 meters per second. Vertically, the initial velocity is 80 times sine 16.7, which gives us 23 meters. We now have everything that we need to let us use one of the equations of motion for the horizontal component. One of the equations of motion is S is UT plus half AT squared. S is the displacement, U is the initial velocity, T is the time taken. There is no horizontal acceleration, so this part of the equation becomes zero. Substitute 10 meters for displacement, U is 16.6 .6 meters per second. Rearranging this, we get time is 0 0.1305 seconds. Then we have to find out, in this amount of time, and when the bullet reaches the other side, how far above ground is it going to be? To do this, we look at the vertical component. Again, we're going to use the equation of motion just like before. The initial vertical velocity is 23. We've worked out the time of flight for this horizontal distance is 0 0.1305 seconds plus a half times minus 9.8 times 0 0.1305 squared. Acceleration is negative here because acceleration due to gravity is working against motion. This gives us 2.917 meters. So this is the height above ground. So after 0 0.1305 seconds, the bullet has traveled horizontally 10 meters, and at that time, uh, it's going to be 2.917 meters above ground. Now after that amount of time, where will the monkey be? And remember, the monkey simply lets go of the branch, such that he is experiencing free fall. If the monkey simply free falls under the influence of gravity, his initial velocity will be zero. His acceleration is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared. Initial velocity is zero, so this cancels out. That leaves us displacement is equal to half times 9.8 times 0 0.1305 squared. That becomes 0 0.0835 meters. And that's the distance from the top of the tree. If the height is three meters, um, if I want to find out how far above ground he's going to be, um, I need to do 3 minus 0 0.0835. That gives me 2.916 meters. 
above ground. So you can see that we have arrived at approximately the same answer as we have before for the bullet. So this mathematically proves that the hunter should be aiming at the monkey when he pulls the trigger.